Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this online classes. Today we are going to discuss about bar magnet as an equivalent solenoid. So before going to that, we all know that the circulating currents or the circulating charges creates magnetic fields. That is nothing but ampere circuit and law. So if we have a conducting wire in which if high amount of current is flowing, due to which there is a magnetic field around the conductor, which is nothing but B. So similarly, suppose if you have a circular loop in which high amount of current is flowing and because of the current which is flowing through the circular loop, this behaves as a magnetic dipole. The current carrying circular loop behaves as a magnetic dipole. These all things we discussed in the last chapter. So, if this is a dipole, what is the magnetic dipole moment of this circular loop? The magnetic dipole moment will be given by N into I into K. Where N is the number of turns in this circular loop. If it is by one turn, N will become one. If you have more number of turns, circular uh, turns, then we have to include that number of turns. And I, the amount of current flowing through this loop, and A is the cross section of the loop. So, this is the magnetic moment associated with the current loop. Yes, in the last class, we discussed the magnetic field lines due to a bar magnet and the magnetic field lines due to a solenoid, where we said that suppose if this is a bar magnet having north south poles. And for which the magnetic lines of force external to the magnet, the lines of force will move from north to south. And inside the magnetic field lines are moving from south to north. There we said that this is for the case of a bar magnet. And for the case of a solenoid for which the magnetic lines of force are similar. They move from north to south. And inside the magnetic lines of force are moving from south to north. So the magnetic field lines are similar for the bar magnet as well as for the solenoid. And this is the solenoid for which the magnetic field lines are similar. So we can say that a bar magnet can be considered as a solenoid. That part we are going to see now. So here, how we can confirm that the magnetic field lines of both bar magnet and solenoid are similar. So let us keep a magnetic needle close to the bar magnet and observe the deflections of this magnetic needle. And in the same way, keep the magnetic needle close to the solenoid and observe the deflections of this magnetic needle. It shows that, the experimental, it shows that both are showing a similar deflection. The magnetic needle is showing similar deflections for a bar magnet and a solenoid. Now, we can say that a bar magnet can be considered as a long number of circular elements. So, this is a bar magnet. So, this we are assuming it as a, it is a long circular elements. So, a bar magnet and solenoid more or less they are equivalent to one another. That part we are going to see now. So, a bar magnet can be imagined as a long number of circular elements. In this connection, we are going to calculate the axial field point, magnetic field, due to a solenoid and which is similar to that of the magnetic field due to a bar magnet at the axial point. So, the magnetic field due to a solenoid at the axial point and the magnetic field due to a bar magnet at the axial point both are same that we are going to prove BS for the axial points. 
the uh, magnetic field due to a solenoid at the axial point and the magnetic field due to a bar magnet at the axial point they both are equal at a larger distance that we are going to prove now so let us consider a finite length solenoid having a length 2l and the axial field point is at a distance r from the center of the solenoid and this solenoid has a radius a and we consider a small circular element of t of thickness dx and this circular element is at a distance x from the center of the solenoid so these are the terminology we use parameters we are using so let us consider n is the number of turns in a unit length per unit length and 2l is the total length of the solenoid and a is the radius of the solenoid what is r r is the distance of the field point from the center of the solenoid okay so here we said that n is the number of turns in a unit length then what will be the number of turns in dx units length in a unit length n is the number in this much units of length so for dx unit length the number of turns will be the number of turns is for a unit length it is n for this much length the number of turns will become n into dx let us consider i is the current flowing through the solenoid flowing through the solenoid so by considering all these things what is the magnetic field at the axial field point p due to a circular element of thickness dx so the magnitude of magnetic field we are considering only the magnitude of magnetic field due to dx due to circular element circular element of thickness so what is thickness dx which contains how many number of turns it contains uh, n into dx number of turns so we know that for the case of a current loop having uh, having radius r and the center of the current loop and the axial field point they are separated by a distance x the axial field point is p so for this current carrying loop having one um, one turn the expression for the magnetic field is v is equal to mu naught if i is the current flowing i r square by 2 into x square plus r square whole power 3 by 2 so this is the expression for the magnetic field at point p and this point is at a distance x from the center of the loop and whose radius is r and here it contains only one number of term in that in that case we calculated this magnetic field now for, for our case the magnetic field due to a circular element containing these many number of turns n dx number of turns we can calculate the magnetic field db we are writing it as a small electric a small magnetic field this is not because of the entire solenoid the magnetic field due to a circular element of thickness dx for which the magnitude is given by mu naught so how many number of turns are there in this dx unit length we have n into dx these are the number of turns and the current flowing through it is i and radius of this solenoid is a square by 2 into what is x x is the distance from center to the point p so here this is the circular element the distance from center of the circular element to the axial field point which is nothing but so here it is r and this is x so this distance will become r minus x so here r minus x whole square so this is x square plus r is nothing but here in this case it is the radius of the solenoid is a so a square whole power of 3 by 2 
so from this is from the circular loop so the magnetic field due to a circular element of thickness dx uh, the magnetic field at the axial point is this one now what is the total magnetic field due to all circular elements so we have considered only the circular element of thickness dx but uh, here we have uh, uh, we can imagine it as a sum of different circular elements so the summation is from total length of the solenoid so the total magnetic field magnitude of the magnetic field at actual point can be given as you have to sum the x from uh, suppose if this is a zero we have to sum the circular elements from minus l to plus l so integrating the circular elements the field due to the circular element will get x extending from minus l to plus l the limits from for x is minus l to plus l mu naught n d x i a square by 2 into r minus x whole square plus a square whole power of 3 by 2 so uh, we can keep the variables inside the integral and we'll keep constants outside so mu naught is a constant number of turns are constant current is constant and a cross section area of cross section nothing but the radius by 2 integral from x limits from x minus l to plus l dx by r minus x whole square plus a square whole power of 3 by 2 so one particular circular element this is the magnetic field so summing all the circular elements whose who are, uh, whose limits are from minus l to plus l because it is a total length of pl if this is zero this will become plus l and this will become minus l so how to solve this integral so here we, what we are going to calculate is the actual field point far at this point actual point is at a far distance so for far actual field point that means r is at a large distance far actual field point so it means that r is very much greater compared to the radius of the solenoid and r is very much greater compared to the total length of the cylinder so for far axial field points we will consider this approximation the field point is very large distance compared to the radius of the solenoid and r is at a very large distance compared to the length of the solenoid so by considering this approximation we can able to solve the above integral easily So by simplifying this integral, so b is equals to mu naught n i a square by 2. So in this integral from minus l to plus l dx by, so r is very much greater. What is x here? x is nothing but the uh, a, a circular element distance from the center. So if uh, l is, uh, r is very much greater than l means that its x is also very less compared to r so in this case we can write approximately it as r square plus a square so a is also very less compared to the r value so from these approximations so it is r square whole power of 3 by 2 so the integral can be written as mu naught n i a square by 2 integral from minus l to plus l dx it's nothing but r cube what is r cube it's the distance from center of the solenoid to a point p which is also a constant we can keep them outside so this will be mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube integral from minus l to plus l dx so what is integration of dx integration of dx is nothing but x so here the total magnetic field, actual magnetic field is mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube. So, integral of dx is x limits from 
minus L2 plus L. So by simplifying this, mu naught n i a square by 2 r e cube, this will become 2L. Now we are rearranging this equation. Let us say mu naught into n into 2L and we are writing i and we are multiplying and dividing with the pi so that it will become pi a square by 2 pi r cube. For, so for a certain purpose we wrote like this. So here what is n into 2L? n is the number of terms in a unit length. So n into 2L. So what is this will become total number. This is the number of terms in a unit length multiplied by total length. So it shows that total number of terms in the solenoid and this is the current and pi a square is nothing but the area of the solenoid. So here the magnetic moment of a solenoid. So for a single circular loop the magnetic moment is nothing but i into a. For a single circular loop the mag because of the current it acts like a magnetic dipole and whose magnetic moment is given by i into a. But for a n number of turns, for n number of times, the same magnetic moment will become n into i. It means that the magnetic dipole moment is number of turns, total number of turns into current into area of the loop. Area of the loop. So, see here, it is nothing but total number of turns into current into a square. So all together this will become the magnetic dipole moment of the solenoid. So the magnetic dipole moment, dipole moment of a solenoid of solenoid. So by replacing all these terms with the dipole moment, so B will become mu naught by let us say here we are writing it as 2 pi m by r cube. I am multiplying and dividing with 2. So this equation converts to mu naught by 4 pi into 2 m by r cube. So this is the magnetic field at the actual point at a very large distance because we consider the approximation that the r is very much greater compared to a and r is very much greater compared to the length of the cylinder, length of the solenoid. So in that case, the actual field point of a solenoid is nothing but mu naught by 4 pi into 2m by r cube. So this equation, the magnetic field at actual point for a solenoid is similar to that of the magnetic field due to a bar magnet. We don't have that derivation part. But uh, from the experimentally, we can show that the magnetic field due to a bar magnet is also at each actual point is like this. So it is mu naught by 4 pi into 2m by r cube. We can compare this with a electric dipole. So what is an electric dipole? Already we have done it for in the fourth chapter. The electric field due to a dipole at the each actual point is given by nothing but it is can be written as 2p by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube so it is two times the dipole moment so for the actual point it is two times the dipole moment and for the equatorial point it is p by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube so by comparing these two we can say that the magnetic field at the actual point of a solenoid is same as that of the magnetic field due to a bar, bar magnet at the actual point. So from this we can conclude that a bar magnet can be imagined as a long number of circular elements nothing but the solenoid. Thank you.